Now imagine working on something that only lasts a millionth of a billionth of a second, something so powerful it's the equivalent to all the power plants in the world. Described as a precise scalpel, it's been awarded this year's Nobel Prize for Physics and one of its inventors is Gerard Moreau and he joins us now for Perspective. Mr Moreau, thanks so much for coming and being on our show. Uh, yeah. Tell me in lay terms, the technical term is chirped pulse amplification, uh, CPA. What exactly is that? What did you discover? What problem did it okay, solve? Well, I mean, uh, the problem with lasers, first of all, I mean, I, I should say that there is two kinds of lasers. There is a laser that you, everybody is familiar with. The laser, which uh, basically is on all the time. The beam is on all the all time. There is a kind of lasers where it's not the case at all. And this is a, where the beam is on over extremely short amount of time. Little zaps. As, as you said, a millions of a billions of a seconds. Okay? So why do we do that? Okay? What are the applications? Okay? And uh, applications, you know, are really a lot of applications, but in particular, uh, one application is, for instance, use, use this type of laser as a very fast flash. So we can capture extremely fast event, okay? As you know, if you want really to, uh, to capture Usain Bolt running, <laughs> you know, you need fast. a fast camera. But if you want really to look at molecules and atoms moving and so on, you need a much, much faster camera. And one of the main uses, I believe, of your discovery has been for eye laser surgery. That's right. A discovery that the, that use, rather, came somewhat as a surprise. It was almost by accident. I would say that because there is a cholera. Uh, if you want, if you have short pulses, we are producing short pulses, you know, in fact, to, to produce high power, high peak power. Remember that the power is energy mm -hmm. divided by time. And think about karate, karate chop, okay? Well, you have, you have some energy and you want to produce power, you have really to deliver your, your energy in a very, very short time. It's exactly what we do. And, uh, and, and so, but we do it at a very, very different level, of course, okay? So it, it, it is this, this way that with a relatively small amount of energy, we delivered in very, very short time, and we get powers, you know, which are really uh, thousand times the power produced by all the power plants in, in, in the world. Okay, now, what do you do with that? Okay, these are the questions, okay? Now, if, if you are using uh, these applications, if you are using this concept, okay, uh, you can use it to ablate, mat ablate material with an extreme pre anything. precision without any collateral damage. It's so and precise. this is the reason why we discovered this, uh, we, had, we made this discovery, the importance of this application, of this type of laser for eye surgery. It, but it was an accident almost. It that, was an accident. Tell us about yeah, that. Yeah, because, yeah, exactly, because we just discovered these lasers, so the, we, are, we were working on it, a student was working on it, you know, and as he was adjusting, aligning the laser, he got the laser in his eye. Panic. You know, and that happened. It's just, uh, we don't like it, <laughs> but that's sometimes what happened. It's an accident. And so we took the, the student at the hospital. The surgeon looked at this eye, and he said, wow, this is fantastic. What kind of laser do you have? And the student said, why? He said, because the damage is perfect. It was perfectly round, and it's perfectly round, and no collateral damage, and so on. Just exactly so immediately, we realized that, we, I was at the University of Michigan, University of Michigan realized the potential of this, um, uh, of this application for the eye, because for the eye, of course, you know, you don't want to go in the eye with a jackhammer, right? You want to have something very 
precise, very delicate. Yeah, and, amazing. and this is... Uh, is that where your discovery is, is used mostly or are there other applications? No, 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 no. There are many, many applications. Uh, applications uh, have to do also with the fact that these, these pulses are so uh, powerful that they can accelerate particles very much like an accelerator, except that the, the accelerator can be extremely compact. Okay, right now, you know, you look at CERN, uh, exactly. 20, it's 27 what kilometers, <laughs> and the, tie, the size of, <laughs> by, if you were able really to build CERN now, it will be measuring meters. Okay. Yeah, because it is quite sizable. Uh, but when you look at the power and the energy, and it's all concentrated in this tiny fraction of a second, I mean, how does one work on something so infinitesimal? So, well, it's, it's not... Uh, yeah, it's exactly... I, I can ask you the question, you know, when you are uh, using your flash, mm. you know, uh, with your camera, you don't ask yourself these questions. Sometimes. Well, but how did the discovery come about, though? I mean, how did you, you figure out to, to break something down to that, to stretch it, to break down the power into such okay. a tiny piece now, of a second? Exactly. Why? I mean, this concept works on manipulation of light, okay? We are stretching, we are using a very short pulse, okay? Femto, um, a very, very short pulse. And then we are stretching it before we amplify it. And, and we amplify it and then we compress it. Why do we do that? Because if we were using, we were amplifying the pulse um, uh, readily without stretching it, then what will happen, it will break down the medium. Mm, because yes. the power will reach a level where the medium will not, sus will not sustain the power. Oh, okay, so you and so that's the reason that balance. we have to stretch it Many times, I mean, like hundreds of thousands of times. To manipulate it So we it decrease by hundreds of thousands of times the intensity, and we, in, we, can, we can extract hundreds of thousands of times better the energy from, you know. And that's what, that's this, what this revolution is all, all how about. How long did it take? I mean, how many years of research and study did it take to... to well, I mean, the idea, of course, you know, comes relatively quickly. But um, to implement the idea, of course, takes a takes long time, okay? If you want to perfect it, mm. for example, if you want to, uh, to use this idea to go and, 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 and go and work on your eye, you know, there's a lot of things that you have to do around it, mm. okay? So, uh, yes. Uh, the initial discovery. So now it's, uh, it's a huge field, in fact. Because there is many, many researchers are working. In. Fantastic. And how do you feel about winning that Nobel Prize some decades after you actually made the discovery? Well, uh, I feel great, of course. But um, you have to say that uh, be between the time where we made the discovery and the time and, 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 and now, there's a lot of applications that came about that we had no idea about it Just how big when we the started. Was. <laughs> so the, the discovery were all along. I mean, we had a thousand discoveries with the first one. So yeah, you've already been able to enjoy uh, the fruit of your labor, as they say. Uh, Mr. Jarmou, thanks so much for coming in and explaining yeah. this to us further. And I know you're heading over on the 8th of December to collect that prize. Many yeah. congratulations. Okay, thank thanks. you very much.